Day one of the 2022 NFL Scouting Combine and plenty of storylines coming our way, rumors coming our way. Uh, we've learned a little bit more about the value of some quarterbacks out there, uh, potentially on the market. The 49ers have one that they are currently shopping. We think all that and more coming up on today's Winky Wednesday episode of Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you once again at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. As you know, if you're watching on YouTube on Tuesday evening, we get the Winky Wednesdays out a little bit early to you. If you like watching this on video, if you like watching this on your car or listen to us in your car on your way to work, you know that this is a Winky Wednesday episode. So let's bring on today's guest. Nicholas Winkler, come on down. <laughs> I like that. Nicholas Winkler, what's happening, my man? How are you? Have you healed up from our uh, our 18 holes of golf we played a couple oh. of days ago? I woke up on Monday morning. I was like, yep, it's official. I'm old because this is tough getting out of bed. It's a lot of fun. I mean, you get to drive around in a cart. It shouldn't. You, you shouldn't be sore the next day playing golf. But I was. Yeah, I mean, that tells you where I'm at physically. Uh, did you mention <laughs> you're almost hole in one on the pod yet? Uh, no, I did not mention that. Uh, I, I you, he, the, he mentioned it to me. You told me. I, okay. Did I say that on the air or not? I can't remember. But um, I, I figured the listeners would understand just looking at me knowing I'm a high-level right. athlete that that would be to be expected and probably surprised that it didn't go in. That It was just a yeah. near hole-in-one and not an actual hole-in-one. I mean, it was a beautiful flight of the ball, high, hit right next to the pin and just kind of skirted to the left. And if it was about four inches further, it would have gone in. It was a beautiful wow. shot. It was definitely shot of the day. It only took me 15 holes to hit a good shot. Mm -hmm. So uh, but it, it, that's the kind of shot that makes you keep coming back. That's yeah. right. No, it, was a, it was a beauty, man. I, I've never seen a hole in one live. So that was, that was going to be real exciting. We almost lost it. I mean, everybody was freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, you had a scorching back nine. If we could have just erased yeah. the front nine from what happened, um, yeah, but fun, fun too many time. lost balls on the front nine. Shout out to uh, Ryan Covey and Jim Cosmore who joined us for our foursome uh, over there in wherever the hell we were. What town is that in? Redwood Canyon, Castro Valley, man. Redwood like Canyon, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's fun times. Croc's talking about we talked to off the air. Croc wants to uh, add a little golf course, golf range now next to his facility that he's building down there in Arkansas. He's got a lot of space, so. I say go for it. Also, hey, but be careful, Croc. If you go to the used club, go you go to the the played against sports or whatever, and go get a used seven iron, and you start mm -hmm. golf. Look out, man, because it'll it'll start to uh, it'll get, start to get deep into your brain and your soul, and then it's frustrating, but it's also fun at the same time, and it, it, <laughs> it can consume you. So mm -hmm. just beware. I'm 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 be gonna ready. get into it, man. I'm, I'm gonna go, uh, you know, get me a club and. Just starts just hacking away. Mm -hmm. And uh, swinging. you're an athlete. You'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Create my own little holes and put flags up and everything. There you go. I don't know where to go first with the, some of the stories we're seeing from the NFL scouting combine. And this is day one. And, and the players haven't even started running around in shorts. In fact, they still don't start working out until Thursday. I always remember how the combine goes. You get excited. Oh, next week's the combine. And nothing happens until the weekend, practically. So still a couple of days before we're going to get 40 times out there. We'll see who actually works out, who doesn't, what height, weights, and speeds look like for a lot of these prospects. And uh, I guess tight ends quarterbacks and wide receivers will start weighing in Wednesday, then working out on the field and we'll get those times uh, on Thursday, but there's plenty happening in Indianapolis aside from what goes on with those workouts. And that is when executives and scouts and coaches and everybody gets together and they take the podiums and they start talking. And then they have some martinis behind the scenes and start talking to each other. You get a lot of sourced up comments and stuff. And we're starting to see a lot of that stuff already. I, I think my favorite one from the day, from the day, let's start talking here about quarterback trade value. Hmm. How about Bruce Arians comments on Tom Brady? If any 49ers fans out there are hoping Tom Brady's going to make an appearance this summer uh, might be costly. And according to Bruce Arians, Asked if he would trade 
Tom Brady and accommodate a Tom Brady trade request if he did request one. He said, nope, bad business. Five number ones, five first round picks would be the <laughs> what do you guys think? Tom Brady, yeah, worth one. it. <laughs> well, it, it is going to be costly. And, and I've tried to explain this to people, you know, via DMs and things like that on social media. But why would the Bucks want mm -hmm. to just first they got to take on a huge cap hit? So they got to take on the cap hit, uh, cap hit north of $30 million. So why would they want to take on that and just give them away to another team? Like, no way. You're going to have to make it worth it. And I'm not going to want him to go to a team that's just going to improve and be a Super Bowl favorite. and not In get my much conference. In, return. in your conference and not get much in return for it. I Once once I heard about the, the, the cap hit that they would take, I, I rolled off the 49ers because it has to be 100% worth it to that team. And the 49ers just don't have anything of that type of value to give to them that, to where it would be like, well, all right, we gave him to a division opponent because he just wanted to go there but or a conference opponent, and he wanted to go there. But you know what? It was worth it because of we got this haul back. Like, that wouldn't be the case with the 49ers. Mm -mm. They just don't have it. They, they, they gave up multiple firsts already for Lance, and I, I don't see anything that's worth it enough. There's, there's multiple thoughts I have when I heard that comment from Bruce Arians. And A, he's not the GM, so. That's True. that's out there too, and, and you know that's just Bruce Arians being Bruce Arians and, and throwing a nice quote out there. It wouldn't actually cost five first round picks, but I get the sentiment from him, and he's the coach and he's competitive. Uh, I will say this: Tom Brady just gifted you a Super Bowl ring by signing with your team. I would think that Tom Brady has earned the opportunity to say, "Hey, I'm not going to play for your team anymore. Can you accommodate a trade for me to go to my childhood team, play one more year?" It's not like. Bruce Arians drafted and developed Tom Brady, right? He was gifted Tom Brady, and they went and got a Super Bowl and won a Super Bowl together. And my other thought is, how the heck did Tom Brady, at this advanced age, at this point in his career, how did he not sign some sort of a contract that gave him an out so he could right. control his own future? Tom Brady, at 45 years old, still can't have a say in where he gets to play football? That's, like, mind-blowing to me and maddening. I, I, it was originally a two-year deal, right? So it, it must have been... Remember, I think they did some kind of restructure and added a yep. year, maybe or something after the Super Bowl. To yeah, give I, some, I, oh yeah, to give him some cap space to to bring more people back for the run, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. it was a really so, I mean, two year deal. Is that a possibility if he does come back? Is there some sort of restructure they can do to make it so that that dead cap hit wouldn't cap be hit, on the books? The the cap hit stuff. All that would happen after June first, so it would get spread over to two years. So, mm -hmm. and that's when he would come back anyway. I'm sure is is summertime. So I think the cap hit stuff would all be spread either way, whether he's cut or released or traded or whatever that is. So I think some of that is mitigated because of the post June first mechanics of the salary cap, and and some of it would go to this year, some of it would go to next year. But yeah, that's uh, it. Just doesn't feel right if the if Tom Brady did want to play somewhere, and for the Bucks to stand in the way of it and ask for a, a ridiculous amount because, it, you know, it's like sort of you're gifted this player. He decided to sign for you, and then you're going to do him dirty by not allowing that to happen and not – right. I mean, you don't, you don't have to sit there and take nothing. You should get a little something for it, but you, it, it's – If yeah, I'm taking uh, on 30-plus million-dollar cap hit, I need more than something. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be $30 million cap hit. And, but the thing is that the reason that all happened is because Tom Brady came and gave you a Super Bowl. So take, take a $200 million cap hit. I don't care. You got the ring out. You got what you wanted out of it, right? And two MVP-esque seasons. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. What he put up numbers-wise there in Tampa Bay, he filled he those seats. He probably sold a lot of season tickets, too. He did a lot for that franchise. I mean, Bruce Arians isn't giving his ring back for five first-round picks, right? Listen, bad business. Bad business. Yeah. It's not it's personal. It's true. It is bad business. Yep. No, it's you're right. Personal. Why would you Why would you want him to go play for somebody else, especially somebody that stands in your way of getting the Super Bowl? Like, it just and it doesn't make And you're not going to benefit much from it. That, that's my right. thing. It would be one thing if, like, all right, somebody is giving me – and when he says five first, obviously he doesn't mean right. that. But he's saying it's going to take a lot. And the mm -hmm. 49ers, you can't give that to me. So mm -hmm. if it's someone else, sure. It, Philadelphia Eagles come calling – and they want to give up three, three, three first round picks this year. I bet they take that and that oh, thirty no plus million dollar cap hit. But, but would Brady go do that? Would Brady come well, out no, of retirement saying, to play I'm, for the Eagles? Well, no, but I'm just saying, just in general, like right. if it were that scenario, yeah, we'll let you go and we'll take this cap right. hit. Okay, we we'll get. But like, just because you want to go to your childhood team, 
Right. <laughs> and like, no, it makes no sense yeah. for us at all. This isn't a time. friendly. Yeah, this I isn't totally, a friendly tournament and a friendly no, little I, thing that's happening. This is a business. You said it. I totally disagree with that. And, and this is one of the few cases that I do disagree with that is because it's Tom Brady and because of the point of the career he's in and because of him deciding to come like he anointed your team, a Super Bowl team by deciding to come to you for no reason. So you what know, would it take? He could have gone what, anywhere. He allowed so him to give up play for your team. He did you a solid by getting you a Super Bowl ring. You do whatever it takes now. For this guy to go finish his career how he wants to um so and, what would, what and look and what again it's not a 30 million dollar cap hit because that's get spread over two years and they're going to take a cap hit no matter what and they knew they were going to take a cap hit when they did the deal and the restructuring and all that so the cap thing is is not a factor at all to me um and what it would take i have no idea what it would take but it, it wouldn't take ones it, it wouldn't take any first round picks let alone five first round picks a couple but, young players or it shouldn't i don't know if it will but and, and the other thing is Brady can screw them by coming back too. So he can make it hard on your franchise too. All of a sudden you make all these plans, you go get another quarterback and all of a sudden Brady shows up. And he's like, Oh, now I'm here. Now you got to pay me. <laughs> you got to take me off the reserve retired list. That means you got to trade me or cut me, or I'm going to not play. I'm going to sit out, but I'm not retired. So I'm here. So now what are you going to do? Mm. So he can play hardball too. So th it's not just the, that they drafted and developed this guy and and he's doing them dirty he went and got them a super bowl you let the greatest quarterback of all time you 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 all sides could come together and facilitate something that makes sense for everybody if tom brady really did want to come back hey tom you come back we welcome you back with open arms right it's like just when you think that the door is getting slammed shut us. like yeah peacock put his foot in there he's like nah it's, no, but right. it's still but possible says, but that's but, the thing he says hey guess what i'm coming back and so now He's active. He's on the roster. Yes. Right. Let's and he, go. But then he says, <laughs> but exactly. But then he says, oh, except for I'm not actually going to come. Now I'm holding right. out. So now you have to pay me. So now there's cap ramifications. And now because no, you get to find them every day that he's not there. And it's a it, lot of money. It goes against your cap, though. Hmm. It still screws your cap royally because you can't you can't have him on the reserve retired list if he's actually not retired anymore. So, so he maybe he's he just uh, Arian's just bumping up the trade value then, right? Just just being like, look, this guy might come back and, and decide to screw us. We want five first round picks, but he knows he's not going to get that. But he's like, come at us, you know, come at us with something. I, I, that's it's just Arians being Arians. That's the only thing I yeah. took from it. I don't I don't think it would actually. I don't think it's actually the roadblock that it would seem like it would be if Tom Brady wanted to come back. I don't think Tom Brady wants to come back anyway. Or you know, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't project that being something that's that's very likely at all for the 49ers or any other team, but it is funny to hear him. Like it's funny for for Bruce Arians to puff out his chest like he had anything to do with Tom Brady being Tom Brady. You know, See, I, being a, that was Tom Brady making himself a buck. That was nothing. That was nothing that Bruce Arians. It's just did. business. It's just yeah. business. I, and I completely disagree with you, Peacock. I feel like Brady's that guy where he just he's like the the spotlight's been on me for this long. Like he's gonna take some time away and he's gonna miss it. And he's going to be like, wait, I can I can come back and be in the news again and cause a stir and, and maybe get to go play with my hometown team. Like, let's go. Let's go. Dude, I'm the make, goat. He could make the storyline happen even without wanting yeah. to come back. Yep. He, could, he could shoot a text <laughs> to his agent and be like, hey, make stir the pot a little bit. Let's, yeah. let's, put, let's get my name in the news a little bit today. Uh, we got like to other, we gotta move on to some other storylines, including what if Jimmy Garoppolo brought back enough like five first round picks to trade to Tampa to bring in Tom Brady. Is that a possibility? Very unlikely. Some other things we're hearing from the combine in Indianapolis uh, coming up, by the way, some very good props at betonline.net as it pertains to the NFL draft over under 4.29 seconds for the fastest 40 yard dash time by any prospect at the 2022 combine, um, which position group, has the fastest 40 yard dash. Is it a cornerback, a wide receiver, a running back that has the fastest time this year? Rich Eisen's famous 40 yard dashes. 6.03 is the time they've put the over under on for the Rich Eisen 40 yard dash. Will John Ross's 422 get broken this year? Tons and tons. 49 bench press reps at 250. Croc could throw that up, I bet, right now. Will any of those records be broken? Tons of combine props and NFL draft props going up at betonline.ag. So, yeah, even though football's over, you can go bet on football at BetOnline and basketball and hockey and boxing, Vegas casino games as well. So head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends, action, 
and news in the sports betting world at Bet Online, where the game starts. A lot of listeners are talking about some very pie in the sky ideas about what Jimmy Garoppolo could bring back. Jimmy Garoppolo, though, going under the knife, and it's a story that we already knew was going to happen, right? This from Adam Schefter. He says, 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo expected to soon undergo shoulder surgery that would sideline him until this summer, sources tell ESPN. It's not expected to impact his trade status, and Garoppolo still likely to be traded this month per sources. Garoppolo injured his shoulder during the wildcard win over Dallas per sources. I don't think we need sources for that one, Adam. Uh, he also says uh, does not need thumb surgery for the un- other injury he was playing through in the playoffs, but uh, still significant interest, according to Adam Schefter in Garoppolo from multiple teams per sources. Preliminary estimates are that Garoppolo is expected to resume Zoom throwing sometime prior to the July 4th holiday. So it will not impact Jimmy G playing next year. I think we already kind of knew that Jimmy G was going to have some sort of procedure done. And so it's not a long-term injury. He should be back. And according to Adam Schefter, who's probably getting his information from Jimmy Garoppolo's agent, it sounds like based on some of this stuff, um, that Jimmy G's trade value will not be impacted. What is that trade value though? And I believe it was an article in The Athletic that talked about two fourth round picks and maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers offering Mm. something of that sort to get Jimmy Garoppolo. What do you think? Two fourths? That seems a little bit light compared to some uh, folks out there that are trying to uh, talk about how the Niners could finesse a number one pick out of a a team. I think that was me yesterday on the pod. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to finesse you. You can get one, okay? Right. Um, Two fourths seem... It seems like a number they come with first, you know, like, hey, two fourth round picks. What do you think? And then, you know, then the Niners come back much lower and then they meet somewhere yeah. in the middle. I could see there being a, a fourth this year and a conditional day two pick next year. I could totally see that being the final uh, trade value for Jimmy Garoppolo. But two fourths seems like not quite enough. Mm. With the but the injuries, I, mean, I think uh, he, you can say it doesn't change things, but yeah. I think teams can use that as leverage because he's had mm-hmm. a, he's had a had a history with injuries, for sure. And now all of a sudden, well, we he misses all of OTAs, which you know people skip OTAs anyways a lot of times. But he can't throw with the team; he can only do walkthroughs and his mm-hmm. rehab. Uh, so you know that's just something else to kind of put towards. It. I think I think because of that, a what is it? Uh, what do they call it? The pick that might be next year, and it might be a third. Oh, conditional. Might be a third. Right, right, right. conditional. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, I think that's. Big yeah. Yeah, and if I'm the 49ers, long. I want to go that route. Give me a fourth this year and a conditional third that can turn into a second next year. And I think you take that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I would probably, I think that's right on, Croc. I think that is exactly the trade. If I had to project exactly what the 49ers end up getting, uh, a, a day three pick, fourth or fifth this year with that conditional pick next year that could be a two if Jimmy Garoppolo's active for eight games or whatever. And I don't think it'll be a high number. Just, you know, the fact that he's available for half the year is probably all the the condition would be. It wouldn't be something that's, you know, he doesn't, he probably wouldn't have to be even healthy for all 16 games or anything like that. Uh, and if it's not, then it's a third round pick. And so I, I could absolutely see it uh, end up being that type of compensation. And that's why the conditional pick always made sense to me. And that was before the news about his, surgery and we already knew he was probably gonna have surgery anyway so i don't think this really changes much but mm-hmm. what he ends up getting is is the big question and uh whatever he gets it's clear it's not gonna be enough to tempt bruce arians into trading Tom Brady. i thought he was gonna get surgery on the thumb though not the shoulder so that right. was a little surprising i didn't even think about the shoulder surgery yeah yeah you're right uh, I, I i thought it was gonna be the other way around so maybe mm-hmm. that's worse because the shoulder affects the throwing arm of course the hand is just the grip so yeah, he, shoulders gonna, he, don't always bounce back. You know that that is definitely something that that's a, you know makes you a little skeptical. I think if you're going to go out and try to bring in a guy that's you know you're hoping is going to stabilize your franchise. You know a lot of these teams are just looking for that guy that can give you 14, 15, 16 games of solid quarterback performance. And if you got a guy who's proven he can't stay healthy year after year, and now he's going under the knife on his throwing shoulder, like oh uh, yeah, I I think to say it doesn't hurt it. I think is just wrong. Like, I think that that definitely affects the, the his trade value for sure. Do y'all think that he played any different with or without the injuries? I saw your tweet today. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's, it's hard to say that it's hard to say either way. Right. I mean, 
He, he looked like I Jimmy think that's, G all year. That's a good testament to him with playing through injuries, right? Because I'm not sure. saying he was not injured. But I thought what it looked like with him throwing the ball mm. that, you know, in the playoffs or whatever, I, I thought it looked like – it looks like Jimmy. It was quick. He mm. was, you know, accurate at times. He missed at times. I feel like that was pretty consistent with what we've seen – really throughout his time with the 49ers where he's going to make some throws, the intermediate throws, he's snapping that off. It's pretty accurate. And he's also going to have these weird misses that you can't attribute to just injury because it's, it's, it's been him. And yeah, so I, I'm curious to see, and I talked about the game against Philadelphia. I was there yeah, and he was missing throws all over the place. He was as healthy right. as can be, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> and, and that game was just a, a poor outing for him in general. And I think, some people, I think in a lot of games, you could talk to talk about the you know first half versus second half, whether it's good or bad. I felt like in almost every game, there were two different sides to Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, the the was it the Bears game where it felt like he was gonna get benched at halftime before he had the downfield throw to Debo mm -hmm. Samuel. Up until that point, he was very hit and miss and just not very good. I, I think we've seen him look like that a majority of the time, and then all of a sudden it starts clicking and he's making throws and it's like, oh, okay, there goes Jimmy. But really, I think all parts of it is Jimmy and it's hard to tell if the right. injuries had any type of impact it, just in the sense of, of of what it looked like. Because I, I obviously, I mean, playing through injuries, that had to be tough. I think he's a warrior for that. But I'm not so sure it really changed his overall game. I saw one person tweet out like numbers like, well, first half against Dallas, second half against Dallas. And it was like, first half was really good. Second half was poor. And it's like, dude, you, you can point to a bunch of games throughout the year that was that same exact way and, and, and throws that he missed the same exact way. So mm -hmm. I think Jimmy is Jimmy. And salute to him for looking the same, whether he was hurt or not, because I think that's hard to do as well. Oh, I, it's amazing, Croc. And you're so good at doing this, a bashing and praising Jimmy yeah. at the same time. <laughs> It's unbelievable. <laughs> I love how bad and good he is. <laughs> All right. Um, more on that coming up. And the 49ers lose another assistant coach. What is going on with the mm. Niners coaching staff? It's March, and they need a whole bunch more coaches still. Uh, we'll finish up today's Winky Wednesday episode after I talk about Built Bar. And my diet's going well because of Built Bar. Wink's diet's going well because of Built Bar. Ooh. I didn't think about this, Wink. You had a coconut Built Bar at the turn before you went blazing yeah. hot on the back nine at the golf course. I didn't even think about this. Uh, and by the way, your thoughts? Coconut flavor? Thumbs up? So good. Oh, my yeah. goodness. That's the best one by far. It's that protein. I mean, it, it, it improved my you, golf game. No, but have you really? tried the puffs? You can't say it's the no, best. No, I haven't tried the puffs yet. No, I haven't tried the puffs yet. Best yet. Okay. The banana right. cream, That's not I've ever tasted. Banana cream pie. They got the key mm. line pot, like the puffs. That's where it's okay. At. We'll the try puffs. that next time we play. Yeah, okay. I'll bring some puffs for you next time. We'll get you a whole box of built bars and before get, get the first tee, though. Before the first, yeah, have one before each nine holes because you were there 10 strokes better on the back nine after that built bar because of that protein 17 grams of protein, only 130 calories in most built bars. And yeah, croc talking about the puffs. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow, fluffy marshmallowy puffs, not just a protein bar. They are a treat and covered in 100% real chocolate. No matter your favorite flair, you can find it at built.com. Get a mix box if you're not sure what flavor you want to get. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Peacock, real Speaking quick, I know we're going to get in some, but I, I, I see you checked out some of the quarterbacks that are going to be at the Combine. Trash. And Absolutely or in, in, in this class, <laughs> and you know, you you obviously the 49ers have Trey Lance and, and they got him. They kind of he had a basically a red shirt year. Do you think the 49ers, when you look at this class and potentially 49ers, that's a good question, too. If the 49ers didn't have Trey Lance, would they be looking for another quarterback this offseason? Do y'all think so? They would for sure be scouting quarterbacks and maybe draft one if they fell to 29, but they wouldn't be like fighting to get up to draft no. one of these guys. So do you think they were right when you look at this class and kind of how it's played out so far, you gave up two first round picks for him. One ended up being picked 29. You have Trey Lance, who a lot of people project will go number one in this class via a trade up with Jacksonville. But because, you know, do you think he's that much better as a prospect from, uh, from what you've seen from these guys as prospects? 
Oh yes, no doubt. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Lawrence and, and Justin Fields too. Like uh, even though the bears didn't win last year and, and Justin Fields did not look good. I think the bears feel great about that trade right now about going up and cause there's nobody they were going to draft at number seven this year. That's as good as Justin Fields was as a prospect. So um, I, I like those moves for those teams in hindsight, based on what this class looks like, if they're going to be trying to go draft that quarterback this year instead. And I don't know if it was like, if you give them all the credit, the 49ers and some of those other teams for doing that move because they knew this class was going to be so bad, or if it just, you know, turned out lucky. It's like, Oh man, glad we went all in on last year's class. Cause this year's class uh, is definitely not as good as last year's class. But you look at teams like the, the Broncos and the, the Panthers, that passed in the top 10 on quarterbacks and they're sitting there in the top 10 again because they're bad because they had bad quarterback play and there's nobody worth taking there. Like maybe you can talk yourself into one of these guys, but I think some GMs are going to get fired like this. I've been seeing names thrown in the first round. This class is garbage. Croc <laughs> Matt Corral. Matt Corral is about the size of my three and a half year old son and has about the same arm. <laughs> and my son doesn't know which army wants to throw with yet. It's crazy. Yeah. It's it's not ideal <laughs> this he's class. Gritty. I gotta say he's grittier than my son is. My my son would probably fold uh, in the pocket. Uh, there, there's I mean there's some things to like about all these quarterbacks. I, I don't want to crush them that bad because there's some good quarterbacks. I was just like yeah second round okay if, you know Matt Corral falls in the second round he's got some moxie he's got something to him you draft him there Desmond Ritter I like as a second round guy maybe um, but aside from Willis who has a lot of tools to work with and and, and Willis would be. QB five at best in last year's class, I think. But and that's saying that you like him more than Mac Jones. Yeah, and I didn't like Mac Jones that much, but I thought Mac Jones was like a late first round pick, and that's probably where Willis belongs too. Is is after pick fifteen? So it would be you know it'd be a battle between Willis and and Mac Jones, and um, uh, I think Mac Jones is definitely a better prospect than Kenny Pickett, who's maybe my QB two in this class. But I would have all those guys aside from Willis and Willis, I would argue is maybe a mid first at best. And that's based on tools and traits. Um, yeah. Mid to late first is probably what I would say. And, and, you know, quarterbacks go higher than they're supposed to. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to fight someone who, you know, if Washington drafts Willis at 11, I would totally get it. And some teams in the twenties might draft some of these other quarterbacks. And I totally get that, but uh, they're, they're day two prospects. I think for the most part, and, uh, and, and Matt Corral is like, I saw him. He can't even, he's like skinnier Jimmy Garoppolo with his arm. You're going to draft that guy in the first round. And there's a lot to like about these guys. Don't get me wrong. They might turn out to be good quarterbacks. I'm just talking about purely as prospects. That's why if a team's looking for a quarterback, I would not screw around with these quarterbacks in the draft. And if they fall to you in the second round, maybe you draft a guy and try to develop them, but I'm not fighting to go one of those. I'm going to go get a veteran quarterback on the market. And I would much rather spend uh, on, on a known quantity. And if maybe if a guy falls to you in the second or third round, that's a rookie, you try to develop that player. But man, uh, th this class is not good for those quarterback needy teams. And, and one one thing too to kind of take into account with this whole thing with the quarterback situation and drafting Trey Lance and being able to kind of redshirt him and see him a little bit. Okay, you know, see how he looked from the Cardinals game to Houston game, and you know he got better. And okay, mm -hmm. would be the best prospect in this class. He'd also be like the youngest quarterback in this class if you plugged him into this <laughs> class so right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Corral. I think Corral was a fifth year senior. Um, Ritter could have come out last year and we thought he would and he's kind of the same prospect maybe an early two is, is what we thought Ritter was going to be last year and I think we both liked Ritter last year right out of Cincinnati right. maybe he helped himself a little bit but he's kind of the same prospect as he was I think be, the same just, I don't think he helped himself at yeah. all I, I think it's, it's just yeah it's, it's the same yeah. I, don't, I don't think yeah. it moved um um let's see Willis went to he went to we Auburn to? first right and so he was behind Jarrett Stidham forever there and he transferred, so he, even though he hasn't been on the radar for a long time, he's still older than Trey Lance is because he had to go through all the, the transferring and stuff, and he's been at multiple spots. Um, yeah, they're all older than, than Trey Lance, which is crazy. So not only did the Niners, you know, kind of luck out or strike gold, if you will, by trading up and getting a guy who'd probably be the first round pick. And, but they also lucked out that it's such a trash draft that now Jimmy Garoppolo's value has, has skyrocketed, right? Compared to what it would be if there was another quarterback heavy class like there was last year. Yeah, and maybe. If, and if Trey is good, you know, obviously you hope he right. is and he works out. You gave up the, at least in this year, the 29th overall pick, right. which the value of that for, on a point scale isn't crazy and if the 49ers go to playoffs again next yeah next season i mean they they would have won if if he's good if 49ers can go to playoffs with trey lance 
And, you know, for the next two years, the 49ers escaped like thieves in the night with what they did <laughs> and what was out there to come as far as the quarterback class. Right. I'm going to tease the topic for tomorrow's pod, Croc, because we don't have time to get much into it today. And we've talked a lot about the 49ers assistant coaching staff. And now another one, a guy that's been a really important assistant for mm -hmm. the entire Shanahan family, Bobby Turner. He's having some uh, knee surgery, it looks like. And he is not going to be coaching with the team this year, according to Matt Barrows. No word on whether Turner is retiring forever, but he's not expected to be the 49ers running backs coach in 2022. He missed the 2014 season after hatching, having surgery on his knees, and he's having something similar this year as well. So Bobby Turner is 70 years old, and he's been around for a long time. Anthony Lynn actually played running back under Bobby Turner. So <laughs> Anthony Lynn, I thought he was going to be maybe running game coordinator. Does he become running, running backs coach and assistant head coach? Is that going to be his official title? We'll see. But the Niners have a lot of needs on the coaching staff, and it can't be just – Anthony Lynn taking care of all of it, right? So they still need offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, running backs coach now. So a lot of work to do. Coach. And yeah, and I guess that's why Kyle Shanahan is not at the combine this year in Indianapolis. He's actually staying home, and he's going to go through all the interview right. process there and, and letting uh, John Lynch and the scouting staff do the work there. And he's got a lot of work to do with the coaching staff at home in Santa Clara. So I guess that's where Kyle Shanahan is going to be. A little worrisome, though. Uh, let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that more tomorrow about the coaching staff and, and what's going on there with the 49ers and uh, how they're able to fill that class and why why they haven't filled the the coaching staff March. It's March, man. Well, like they, all the other I, coaching staff in the NFL are filled already, right? They probably will do some some promoting mm -hmm. uh, right. within. Also, you got to look at Kyle Shanahan's probably like, dude, I mean, yeah, some work has been taken off my plate, but I am the offensive coordinator. Yeah. I do call the plays. I do all this. Now maybe for a year until I figure out who is going to be the officer coordinator in the future to kind of take a little off my plate again. I just got to do a little bit more uh, with the, you know, game planning and things like that. But I do think having an assistant head coach in Anthony Lynn, who, you know, like I've said, he was the running back coach when I was with the New York Jets. So it's not like it's an unfamiliar thing for him. He was running back coach with the Jets. I know he was running back coach with Buffalo Bills as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he's done a lot. With, with that so I, I they have the guys there ready talked about the receiver position probably hankerson will you know uh, uh get in there and be hired there if he ends up taking that promotion so spots will get filled just uh in house i guess and it's just taking a little bit longer to confirm everything yeah. we'll see we'll, we'll talk about some of those um potential in-house replacements for those coaching uh coaching positions and some listeners have some names for us to go mm. through on tomorrow's podcast, talking about some of these, especially the running back coach position. Wink, thanks again for joining us here on Locks on 49ers. My pleasure, gentlemen. And thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Croc's beard is looking good. He's mm -hmm. coming back there. I don't, are you looking into a mirror over there, just checking out your beard, Croc? Um, <laughs> I, got a, I got a screen here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's all give a little scratch, a little groom before we get I, out of here. I will say this is probably one of the strongest bearded podcasts out there right now yeah, uh, yeah on a week no well groomed for sure all right thanks everybody for, for listening for your second listen check out the peacock and williamson nfl show check out the locked on nfl draft podcast which will be critical going down the stretch to the draft especially this week with the scouting combine going on croc and i back tomorrow right here locked on 49ers see you